welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and we'll be delving into some 40k nonsense today. But before we do, if you enjoy today's episode or you just enjoy the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and consider supporting us. You get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, uh, the $15 tier gets HD posters, a lot of good stuff, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, I hear we have some merch stuff to talk about. Oh, yes, we do. First things first, go read Bloodlines. It's our book club. It's very, very good so far. I like it a lot. Uh, but, yes, so this episode is coming out on Wednesday, which means the day after today would be Thanksgiving. Hey! Uh, a, a very happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Happy, happy. A Happy, happy. And of course, like with Thanksgiving, the most important thing ever happens right afterwards, and that's capitalism. We oh love boy. it. We just love capitalism. Mm. It's, it's mm, mm, mm. Mm. Twitter, Chef's great. Kiss. Love Twitter. So good. Love what's going on there. Ugh. And you and, and you, 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 you boys and gal are uh, putting together a Black Friday sale, of course, on the merch site, and are offering some new products. The main thing to note is that a lot of you have been asking for the posters from before we started making the posters and they are being delivered here. All of our original posters on the Patreon, every single one from before the Ripped Abs, Blood for the Blood God one, it's unfortunately in, in um, like text version. There's not just an artwork version, but they yeah, are yeah. all available on the merch site and they will be available all the way until the end of the year until 2023 wow. starts i think it's like nine ten or eleven posters we're talking the old like catherine demonette we're talking the uh the the commissar we're talking the latara one Ooh, the we're talking one let's go the conqueror's we're, abs absolutely we're talking the necron bone zone what we're talking all of the old ones are now available in physical and if you buy two things or more on the merch site from anything in the merch site any combination you get 20 percent off your order and that is again until the end of the year 20 percent off your entire order Buy two things, and uh, and yeah, doesn't even have to be all Adric stuff. Just like the whole website, twenty like buy two things, twenty percent off your order. Tons of posters are now available. Not to mention we have those brand new game mats that you can use for objective markers in your Warhammer games, and all mm. the clothing as well, and the dice. Mm. Lots going on. Big old Black Friday thing all the way to the end of the year. Go check it out, orchidate.com, link Ooh. in the description. And yeah. Stock up on posters. Like, you could just buy a bunch of posters and get the 20% off. Just buy yeah, all the posters. Yeah. Give us money. I love it. <laughs> I don't know why that, that, that I love it was very funny. I I, for some reason, in, in our in our Shuda's Blood and Teeth video, there's like this part where you get run over by the Bane Blade, and it's just the best scream I've heard in a while from you. <laughs> Damn. I don't I don't know why, but it's just got this like ah. My like, death scream amuses you, eh? It really did. It was Damn fucking it. hilarious. I'm I'm glad my suffering and failure can amuse the masses. It was excellent. Mm. All so right. So what are my, we doing today? Hit me with my, a quote, right? It is time for a quote. Oh, no. This one actually might not be as bad as... Well, actually, no, you won't get this one. But, you know, say, I'm going to give you it anyway. You say every episode, and I still don't get it. This one is a little bit hard to, to get, so it's fine. <clears throat> okay. Have a care, blessed soul, when you cry out in the night. For though your need for succor be great, your intention pure, you know not... What listens for your call? You know not what answers your plea. Hmm. This sounds like... Ha have a care, blessed soul, when you cry out in the night. For though your need for succor be great, your intention pure, you know not what listens for your call. You know not what answers your plea. 
This this sounds like some uh, Ordo Heretic is talking to someone that's maybe acting a little bit sus, you know? And they're like, hey, I, I know you're, like, praying to, like, the gods, but, you know, you, you, don't, you don't know. You, you don't know what they're going to give you. you. You don't know how, what kind of heresy you're talking about. So maybe some sort of, like, uh, Ordo Hereticus that's... Uh, uh, Talking down to some heresy people? I don't know. Or I guess it could be the other way. I don't know. Someone, uh, like some kind of chaosy person, and they're like, oh, you pray to the emperor, but pfft, he doesn't give a shit about you. You know? I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, you're, you're right on the chaosy part. Um, it is an extract from Obscuring Rhymes and Fables. Original source unknown. Uh, but you're you're pretty good on the on the heretical part. It, it was pretty hard. You probably weren't going to get it. Um, but it was an interesting quote that I found. Um, yeah, yeah. It is a quote referring to the demon god of Nurgle, because it is when you cry out in the night, for though your need for succor be great, your intentions pure, you know not what listens for your call or what answers your plea. Oh, um, okay. Today is an interesting episode. I was think uh, me and Shai were thinking about what we want to talk about. And I was like, you know, we, we've done an episode on all four chaos gods already, mm -hmm. but we haven't really just talked about demons. 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 And so I went out and I was like, you know what? I was curious because I really enjoyed our Votan episodes because I was able to just open the codex and read through it and learn myself some lore. Mm -hmm. So I went to my local games workshop and picked up a demons codex and Ooh. I decided to read through it and I wanted to chat about it. Hell yeah, let's talk about demons. 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 Demons Codex also, I think, has one of the best cover art. Codex Demons. I, I find it really cool, mainly because there's this little pink horror, and the pink horror is doing this, he's doing this, like, rock on <laughs> um, thing with his fingies. With his fingies? With his fingies, and, and he's like... Uh, blocking a bunch of bolt pistol shots from a sister of battle, and I just, I just like the way he's, uh, he's firing. He's has little... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there wow, is. That's a, little... a very colorful um, cover too. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's actually pretty crazy when you look at the detail. Um, you can see the the sisters having their arms like all fucking trapped by tentacles and shit, and then this, yeah. the demonette is like stabbing one and. There's a plague bearer in the center and some little nurglings, and there's that damn pink horror, like, whoa, wow. with this little rock on thing. <laughs> yeah. and the, He's casting a spell, a spell yeah. rock. Yeah. He's got a hex, and he got like a corn uh, mm -hmm. blood letter in the back on a big steed. It's pretty cool. Whenever I say it's spelled like that, I can't say demons. I have to say diamonds. 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 Matt Damon. Matt Damon's. Matt yep. Damon, his diamonds. power of the warp makes gives him a bigger neck. <laughs> Damn. I, um, so as I was opening this, this book and, and kind of rifling through it, I really enjoy just the straight up first lines of the book, mm -hmm. which is you have opened the book already. <laughs> you have read too much. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that that keeps with sort of the, uh, the, the 40 K canon of you're not supposed to uh, investigate into demons or you're, you're, you've already fell to heresy for opening the book of chaos diamonds the the book of chaos the the malefic tomes that they uh, mm -hmm. have so going going through the book looking at the the fun artwork and uh, all the different kinds of ambition and fear they have they have really good artwork some of it's like uh, a ship flowing through the warp and just the warp it's like this congeal of like maws and teeth and faces that look like a nebula like a Ew. nebula's kind of like how you can see images and clouds oh oh yeah 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 but it's like images in space it's really creepy but yes. uh but very interesting so the nature of the demon um it's something that it's, it's interesting to discuss demons in like how they exist because a demon is an entity in the warp as we all know mm -hmm. uh, a demon cannot truly die it is yep. instead banished back to the warp um i don't really know if it can die in the warp like if zinch is like if hey, fuck you um yeah what happens if it dies in the warp does it just swirl around and then eventually come back again i don't know if it can die in the warp because like that's where souls go 
Um, but mm. Horus has been like so effectively obliterated that I'm not quite sure if like Zinch can just or Korin can just be like, you fucking idiot, smash, and then he just die dies. Um, I know that speaking a demon's true name can be a really useful way to banish them back or perhaps uh, or summon them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you might use a, you might know a demon's true name and then you can create a ritual and that summons the demon. But I know the Grey Knights often know how to banish them away because that's like, yeah. well, it's like their thing. Is it the Grey Knights that have a list of demon names on their armor? Is it this... demon names on their armor? We haven't talked about the Grey Knights yet, but... Oh, I could have sworn I remember talking about some faction that had, like, uh, instead of, like, the uh, little little paper seals on their armor, that they had, like, a list of demon names to because they specifically fight chaos and demons and stuff? I mean, that sounds like something that they would absolutely have, but... I feel like having it on their armor would almost be a bad thing. I would think it would... Uh, oh, yeah, because then it they would... could get blasted or destroyed, and then it's like, well, shit, now we don't know that demon's... Name. Yeah, maybe not. That that probably would be a bad place to put them. I, I kind of can also assume that they might... Uh, uh, that sounds like a word bearer's thing, having the demon's names on your armor. <laughs> that does kind of sound like a word bearer's thing, doesn't it? Yeah. The um, But, I mean, like, even the Grey Knights, they have a special thing. They have, like, Masters of the Warp, and they can shape the tides of the warp, basically. And one of their tides, the Tide of Banishment, which is all Grey Knights are rigorously trained and conditioned to fight against their demonic foes, such as the power and psychic mastery that the Sons of Titan can turn the fickle eddies of the warp against the very creatures it nourishes. It's just like, yeah, Banishment. Yeah. Um, anywho. So a demon exists in the warp a demon cannot exist in real space it cannot so how do they attack us and stuff if they so, can't exist in real space so a demon in its own so an overall concept of, of a demon right you have your four chaos gods in the realm of in the the pantheon of chaos Mm -hmm. And each demon ultimately serves their master. Um, and no matter how on their own they can get, they ultimately still serve their master. Right. And their agenda is often quite cunning and, and pretty smart, but mainly to advance the goal of their master. And a huge part of it is to spread the immaterium into real space. Increase the domain of chaos. Uh -huh. Not to not just the warp, but into real world. So, since they cannot exist in real space as they are an entity of the warp, in order to exist, things like warp storms or tears in reality need to happen that spill the immaterium to the real world and allow them to take a manifestation and form. Okay, so there's almost like a bubble of immaterium warp nonsense that manifests when a tear happens, and they can actually exist in that little bubble. These tears in reality are one of the reasons why demonic incursions have been so bad after the fall of Cadia, because <laughs> the Great Rift has opened, and it's just this yeah. chain of warp storms and tears, and so demons yeah. can manifest everywhere. It's the, it's, the, it's the tear that goes literally across the galaxy. The thing is, is that once these tears are repaired or the warp storm fades, the demons just die. Damn. So very often when it comes to dealing with a demonic incursion, finding the source of the incursion is a big way to help stop the entire thing. Oh, it yeah, has a classic just... uh, like yeah. um, Achilles heel thing where like, oh, the demons taking over the world quick. We got to close the portal and you close the portal and then all the demons die. Yeah. Yeah, if you find the source of the warp storm, then all the immaterium goes away and they can't exist and poof. Yeah, so that's the only way they can exist in a real world. With okay. slight exceptions. Um, one ex major exception is to possess unwilling people. Oh boy. And so possession is a way to allow them to, uh, to also have a world, you know? Okay. Um, but often, yeah, a roiling warp storm is one of the major ways you can create something like that. But, or a tear in reality. But obviously, in order to bring them into the real world, conditions need to be met, mm -hmm. so to speak. And as we know for demons and the chaos gods themselves, 
they respond heavily to worship or not just to worship but also to like the the emotions that go along with it right yeah pain suffering lust all that good stuff all that great stuff yeah good stuff and so often uh, the creation of a warp tear or a storm or entity can be the subtle whispers that lead to a massive incursion um like a obviously with our four choices corn nurgle slanesh and zinch mm-hmm. um the corn part could be just this level of gladiatorial arena hate blood etc that all kind of culminates and allows let's say a bloodthirster to burst through from possessing a guy and then rip open a tear in reality and then bam here comes your demons fun 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 um, so like so, if a giant war breaks out you could expect to see like a you know uh, a corn uh, infestation not infestation you could you could expect to see corn show up or corn demons show up if it's sure. like a huge war and a huge battle and lots of yeah. blood and lots of combat and yeah, there's actually a story about that that I'll, I'll tell you about in a bit. Hooray. Um, But possession in its own right is absolutely a, a major issue with, um, well, how do you say? Like, <clears throat> possession is not just unwitting people, but sometimes, you know, rituals. Because people will you just oh, yeah. fucking go with chaos. They'll, yeah. they'll, make a, they'll make a bunch of chaos shenanigans. They'll create a, a massive um, sacrifice, for example. Uh, in order to pierce the veil and allow a demon to go through. Uh, example, like a psyker. Tons of psychers have come around since the opening of the Great Rift, and they don't know how the hell to use their crap. So over time, that corruption in their mind is like sharks to blood for demons, and they'll they'll force their way through that. Remember our, our warp hole suck theory? <laughs> yes, I do remember the great uh, warp hole suck theory, yeah. So they'll be able to use the suck in order to uh, mm. to, to get in. Um, or not just that, but sometimes the demons will just whisper in the dreams of mortals. Mm. Uh, depending on the things that, that, that is worrying them. Or problems or um, like ambitions. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And then right when it's time, the perfect moment to really sneak into your dreams, bam, it'll grab it. Is that kind of sort of what happened to Lorgar? As in, he was constantly uh, like thinking. Well, he was he he constantly heard like the whisper of the warp and shit like that, or the whispers of like uh, chaos gods and all that shit in his dreams and. Stuff. He, oh yes, he was definitely um, constantly hearing the whispers of the warp. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it was just his genetic fault. Maybe. Because, like, like Perturabo could always see the Eye of Terror, and that caused him problems. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it was necessarily the gods co- and the demons constantly whispering mm. to him, but... Um, and then they but, had their little ritual where they summoned a little bit of uh, demons. Yeah, and then they lowered the Geller field and let everyone become possessed. <laughs> yup. Yummy. Yep. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. M- much many problems. Oh yeah. Um, but once they the demon actually takes control of a mortal, uh, whether willingly or not, the physical form is basically entirely to the demon's will. Um, there is a bit of give or take. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is that if it's like, like a regular human, you're kind of boned. Um, you're just <laughs> yeah. not strong enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've seen multiple times. Often people might bring in possession and think of it as like a symbiotic relationship. Sometimes that's the case with particularly strong individuals. Argel like Tall. Tall. Yeah. Yep. Argel Tall would be it would be one that had mm-hmm. a much more symbiotic relationship. Yeah, they were like brothers. Well, not brothers, but uh, they were, yeah, symbiotic, sure. We are Argel Tall. Yeah. Um and we sometimes it's sometimes and most often it's parasitic. Think um Captain Vendred. Of oh, the, uh, yeah. the exalted. He didn't want that. Very often, the mind of the person will be pushed away into the dark recesses of their own body. Uh, very much like Get Out, the movie, 
where it's kind of like you're in this really deep, dark, black hole, and you can just kind of see what your body is doing, and you have no control over it. You're, like, trapped in the recess of your own mind. Ooh, that sucks. And some, sometimes they won't be that heavy, though. Sometimes the demon will basically maintain your ability to just do what you want, but with very subtle alterations to what you choose to do. Like, they might take over a tech priest that has the control to the plasma reactors for a world and just kind of turn them off. Okay. Or sometimes, depending on which god, they might just be like, oh, sick, new body, and they just, like, mutate it to ungodly looks and just start murdering people instantly. Oh, boy. It all depends on, on what their overall goal is. Okay, okay. We have, we have a little blurb from Shy, though. Yeah, you want to read it? Sure. Uh, they just announced new World Eater possessed dudes, the Eight Bound, virtually unrecognizable from the mortal space marines they once were. Every member of the Eight Bound is each possessed by eight separate demons of corn. What? <laughs> wow, that's that's a lot of possession. As you might expect, this makes them some of the most terrifying combatants in the galaxy, warriors locked in a constant battle for their own souls. Sometimes the spirit of an eight-bound world leader can even emerge triumphant, becoming one with the eight neverborn sharing its physical form. These are the exalted eight-bound, even more dangerous and demonic than others of their kind. Holy Jesus. That That's more of a... Um of a, a shock and strength of the world eater than, than anything else, that they can yeah. overcome eight fucking demons. Eight of them. Oh, God, those are so cool. Those minis are so dope. Yeah, the new world eater minis look really dope. Um, but I know they had eight demons in the Holy demons. shit. And That's... some of them took them over? What the hell? <laughs> That's crazy. That is, that's like, really how neat. strong of a world leader do you need to be to overcome eight? Demons. So Whew. okay, so so hopping back on on, on yeah. track with the demon stuff. Um, the of course there's something that, that's did we talk we talked about the great game before, right? Uh, if Guess we not. did, I'm an old man and forgot. That's fine. So there's there's two things. There's the great game and the long war. The long okay. war is the phrase for the Chaos Space Marines waging war on the Imperium because fuck you, you're the Imperium. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, so like, yeah, they, they always talk about like, th there's uh, lots of, um, what's it called? Uh, things in the Chaos Space Marine decks called like, Veterans of the Long War is is the idea that, wow, oh, okay. this is a Space Marine has been alive for 10,000 years and he's yeah. murdering you. Right. Um, the great game is all of the Chaos Gods fighting each other for power. Oh, okay. Um, constantly gotcha. trying to... Because they're always murdering each other in the realm of chaos, but they also want to spread their influence to real space because it's, you know, it's more real estate. Yeah, basically. that's how they get their power, right? Is, uh, you know, humans believing in them. Well, not humans believing in them, but all the raw human emotions are kind of what feeds them and makes them powerful, so, yeah. Raw, raw emotions in general, but humans especially because there's so fucking many of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also because humans are very susceptible to being taken over by yeah, demons. Yeah, and being corrupted, and yeah. Um, which, yeah, obviously does create this weird back and forth where it's like, well, without uh, the... They want to take over real space as much as they can, but at the same time, real space is what feeds them. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit of a give or take. I think that's maybe just clever writing, uh, where in that case, the demons will never technically win. Because that can't means that the humanity that means can't, they like, starve. Yeah. Yeah. So that's either lucky or clever writing. G GW has both, so I don't know which. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe a little from column A, a little from column B. You know. Maybe maybe you never know. Yeah. Um. But anyway, let's chat a little bit about our first god. Let's talk about corn. Okay. Blood for so, the blood god. Blood for the blood god. Skulls for the skull throne. Corn is, you know, blood god, lord of battles, great butcher, all those various types of words and names mm -hmm. seen across the world in, in various cultures as just that god, the war god. Mm -hmm. um, but I, there's a little excerpt in this book from all four of the chaos gods 
and an incursion that occurs from them that I think is particularly fascinating. Okay. Um, I, people tend to think of Korn obviously, at, well, he's obviously the murder and death god, but it doesn't <laughs> mean like, he disdains sorcery, hates Edgar, that whole shtick. Um, okay. But people kind of forget that he's still like magic. Like, like it's still like a demon. Like it's still yeah. a ghost kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not just pure murder. For example, in Warzone Tartora, oh, actually, I want to read this first. Tartora. Um, extract from the writings of Malos, uh, Malios the Seer. He has like one for every single one of the uh, the chaos demons or mm -hmm. gods. It says eight, the sacred number B of Skull Lord upon his brazen throne. Eight, the bloody rivers and eight, the legions cruel. Eightfold, the damned upon the endless fields of battle and eight times eight, eight and eight times, eight, eight times again, the legions loosed from iron gates. Ever eight, though none knows why, nor asks upon that road of skulls. Damn, that's you, a lot of eight. Kind of crazy that his sacred number is 11. <laughs> I was going to say, no, is no, his I'm sacred not... number eight? Excuse me? Eight, 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 eight. So in Tortora, a orc invasion fleet uh, attacked a uh, for 800 years the mm. fortress world of Tortora stood as for guard of course and orcs the of Wa Gosmond invaded mm -hmm. or Gosmod and the hive worlds of this area were dealing with a bunch of just you know orcs they they shot down a lot of the orc ships but of course there were so many orc ships that they it's all got lot. through yep. and it just led to this never-ending stalemate back and forth of constant, constant battle. Oh. And the preachers and priests were throwing sermons out everywhere for, you know, just for all the troops. Yeah. But the main thing was that these sermons kind of got angrier and angrier and more and more oh. hatred. <laughs> The, the the preachers became just just furious and like this fucking Xenos, these green skins, kill them all instead of the mm -hmm. usual God bless the emperor. Mm -hmm. And it was this, and eventually the um, demonic cries of the actual uh, preachers mm -hmm. had them in their vox, like, like the little vox emitters, yeah. they melted and boiled into brass. And then, oh. and then moved and spread to the feet of the preachers and encased them in tombs of brass, constantly shouting their demonic screeches and yells of corn. Oh boy, that's uh, that sounds really, really bad. The uh, the demonic war cry got so exceptionally like, just ridiculous that the Vox networks would have Korn's demonic war cry screech through it and burst Whoa. the eardrums for people who had the calm beads in their ears. Holy and shit. rents in reality turned people into a like a bloodied rage, turning their weapons on their own comrades and in this violent hatred. And then on the oh. eighth hour of the 88th day of fighting, mm -hmm. A war melody and monstrous howl occurred, shattered every single window of every wall in every bunker, and a fault line across the planet grew, bubbling up with blood. And Corn and his demons, uh, the demons of Corn, spilled <laughs> through this bloody mess and wreaked havoc upon both orcs and humans alike. Oh boy. Yeah, that that does sound like the uh, the the perfect place uh, for corn. That does seem like a, a playground for him. But did did nobody notice that the the priests were getting very angry and very sort of heretical, and nobody thought to stop them from oh angry no chanting? Oh no, you don't seem to understand that they, they weren't chanting heretical stuff. They were simply chanting hate. They oh. were they they were still chanting. They went from um, a god emperor protect us all to god emperor will rip the heads from the orc's body. The, oh, you know, okay. Got the you. Sla slaughter shall continue, that kind of thing. Damn. 
And, and also, these are guardsmen who've been fighting for 88 days. <laughs> that's, that's that, well, okay, fair, fair enough. Con Jeez. Constant murder. I must say, um, I actually fought a guy who played some corn demons uh, a bit ago. Um, yeah, blood for the emperor, skulls for the golden <laughs> throne. Excuse me, Zealot, you're getting a little, mm, just a little crazy. It's a little crazy. A little crazy. Um, but uh, I, I must say that the the in-game demons of Corm, they have this fun ability called warp storm effects, mm -hmm. where you roll, I think, eight dice, and then for every four up, you get a point, and you mm -hmm. can spend it on various warp storm uh, abilities, and they're like... Fury of corn, burning terror, overwhelming rage. Wow, those are very corn. Yeah, sure. It's ex extremely corn. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, I like I like it a lot. Uh, I must say the the new corn. I don't know how necessarily good corn is on the tabletop right now, but um, bloodthirsters, the big flying ones, are mm -hmm. bad men. <laughs> <laughs> they are bad, bad boys nowadays. Well, those are the ones that gave uh, Sanguinius a little bit of trouble, right? Absolutely. Yeah. They were some big ones. Even Mr. Scarbrand. Scarbrand. Literally has a flamethrower-style attack called the Bellow of Endless Fury. <laughs> wow, that's a dope name. Oh, God, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm. Good old Scarbrand. Anywho, next you've got, of course, our... Good boy, Zinch. Hey. Zinch, Zinch. Proliferating in the minds of those with hope. Those huh. with, with schemes and greed. Mm. And, uh, and mm. the want for more. And the want to change. Mm -hmm. Gotta change, Archi yep. Architect of fate. Great sorcerer. Because that's the thing, is that even those who have great intentions can feed Zinch. The, the downtrodden, often, like, they, they might want to usurp a corrupt general. Oh, or, yeah. That would, or just, that, yeah. Yeah, like, like a, the want to feed a starving family. The idea that, like, the, the idea that you were dealt a shit hand and, and you, in, in life, whoever, whatever the reason might be in life, like, hell, even in this day and age, like, oh, yeah. people born to an impoverished area or, or maybe oh, yeah. with a... With a uh, unfortunate like birth defect or something like that thing that fucks with your life so much, like the want for that to be better feeds Zinch. Yeah, it's not always a negative emotion that feeds chaos gods. Like uh, I remember, yeah. I used to have that sort of uh, uh, idea that like, oh, it has to be a negative thing to feed chaos because they're mean and evil. And it's like, no, like just emotion feeds them. It doesn't have to be. Uh, negative. It can be like, oh, I want to change the world for better, and it's like, congratulations, you just fed Zinch. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Congratulations, you, your want and hope for uh, for a better future, and to make your life better than it was is now feeding a chaos god. Yep. The um the Zinchin like actual models are are always these just vast creepy things like flickering war flickering warp fire contorting faces that are constantly changing and adjusting um they, they have like birds that swim and stingrays that fly oh yeah Just they do have the flying stingrays yeah really weird stuff mm -hmm. um the zinchian story is in war zone garmesh which is a, a fascinating one um excerpt from the seer nine the towers that are not what they are Nine, the veils cast or truth untrue. Nine times tolls the silent bell whose deafening peals are never heard. Nine, the pages dancing with flames. Nine, the words and nine, the names. And nine, the lies from truthful tongue. Gee, I wonder what his number is. Six. Obviously. It's three and a half. Hello. <laughs> Naturally. Hello. Um, so this one is interesting. The hive world of Garmesh uh, was actually had a conclave of psychers created after the Great Rift arrived. And oh. with this, they were blinded by faith in the God Emperor because they believed that they were appointed as his champions. This was a blessing brought from him. Mm -hmm. They had a horribly corrupt governor in that underhive. 
And since they were like the low of the low, the downtrods and the poor and the disheveled, mm -hmm. they used all of their powers to, uh, together to read thoughts and enslave the wills of their foes. They glimpsed at the future, conjuring reality, and instead turned the underhives from the hunted to the hunters. The gangs and the zealots were the first, but then the authorities joined their sides eventually as well. Okay. The problem was that this rebellion would burn through the ridiculousness of this underhive, but the governor was able to lock themselves away in their spire fortresses and have their guards hold them back. And the guards were doing a good job. Like, it was just a, a death zone that no one can get through. So with the failures uh, getting so close and the deaths mounting, they were desperate and called upon their powers once more. And the Lord of Change, Diziketh Kazar, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Zinchian, thank you, Zinch names, were, were actually the one feeding them their power the whole time. And all nine of them burst into a warp fire and flame, creating a portal on the ground in which the Lord of Change, the gigantic bird head demon, arrives. Oh, yeah, the twin bird head, yeah. And then from there, just everything went to shit. I bet it did. The Ooh. the sky the skies of Garmesh filled with a kaleidoscope of clouds that whirled faster and faster turning into despairing screams and a giant warp maelstrom. Oh. It was really crazy what happened. It was so, like the architecture of the hive city started to sprout extrusions and rearrange itself. Oh. So no one knew where the doorways or crawl spaces might lead. Gravity was adjusted. Relative position and causality were melted away. The, the rebels and the governor's guards alike found themselves trapped in mazes or stairways that never ended. They oh would boy. they would go they would fight each other walking on walls and ceilings or a, a stone wall would become flesh or a doorway would open and they would walk through and it was just the maws of a great beast that would consume them. Oh boy, that is I mean, that does sound befitting of the god of change. Everything just changes and flips upside down and right side up and doors that go to stomachs and and walls yeah. turning to flesh. And yeah, that sounds like the god of change. All right, a, a chaotic god of change, but yeah. He a great Ooh. horror situation where you just get your guard and you're running down the stairs and the stairs just keep going. And then you just have to turn, turn back and when you look back, it doesn't end. That'd be a, like the, a great setting for a, a 40k horror game. It's just you're on a planet that's being just twisted and turned by Zinch. Mm -hmm. And you have to just somehow make it to like a, a, a transport to get off world or something. Yeah, it's like a whole Silent Hill kind of shtick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd be a creepy game. Mm -hmm. um, there, when uh, eventually the Astropaths sent their cry out to stop them, uh, before this actually occurred, the demonic part. Mm -hmm. And Shipmistress Endara was the name of the uh, the lady who was arriving. And they looked at the skies of this planet and just saw it, this kaleidoscopic turmoil as Zinch taken over the planet. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, Vox, have you established a link with Governor Habel's High Sanctum? So the pause before her Voxman answered only deepened Endara's unease as her crew were heavy veterans. And she yeah. says, yes, ma'am, but I make no sense of what I'm hearing. Root it to my earbud, she said. An instant later, Indara wished she hadn't. Oh, no. The cacophony that erupted through the Vox was appalling, uh, as it had simply been a wall of noise and bad enough, but a confusion of babbling and screaming and mathematical formulae were just chanted. Oh, but the boy. din vin vanished replaced by a sibilant sing-song voice. It took Indara a moment to recognize the words to the lullaby her nursemaid used to sing to her when she was an infant. And the nightmares came, a song that so far as she knew, the nursemaid had invented herself and never repeated to another soul. Oh boy. That's, uh, yeah, that's, 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 um, that's, that's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a... 
I mean, at that point, it's like, fuck this shit, I'm out, turn the ship around, we're going, mm-mm, that, <laughs> hey, exterminate us that planet, would you please? This nursery rhyme is now going to, uh, that you've, that no one has ever heard in their lifetime is now being transmitted to your whole crew. Yep. Ooh. That's Pretty cool. creepy. That's 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 cool, but it's very creepy. That's that's. Ugh. So next up, we got Nurgle. Mm-hmm. Good old Nurgle. Good old Nurgle. I, I, I really don't need to talk much about Nurgle. Not He's really. almost simpler than than Corn, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Um, disease, disease, rot, drowning of miasma and pestilence. The idea that, yeah, it's not just about decay and death, but also the birth of life. Because guess what? When you die and decay, you get to birth maggots and flies and Hooray! and other things. Hooray! Hooray! It's oh. life and death and the cycle, right? The cycle of life. Mm-hmm. The, death, the stagnation. Decay, yep. Stagnation and entropy. Yep. Your um, body everything... will become the soil and the soil will feed the earth and the earth will give birth to a new life. Everything that Zinch hates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. The um and you know it, it's it festers and all even the normal ones. Just your your person is like, damn, I really hope I don't die from this sickness. This would suck. Yep. <laughs> feeds feeds He's Nurgle. Nurgle. Yep. It's please, not just the negative. Please cure my daughter who has leprosy. It's like Nurgle. Nurgle. Feed feeding him. He's just, he's just got a little snack. Seven is the tally of the plague lord. Seven his sacred tale. Sevenfold the miseries that bubble and churn within his cursed cauldron. Seven the count of the guards of death. Seven the reapers tithe. Seven and seven and seven again. The count drones ever on. Ah, and his sacred number is 34. You knew it. I know. Um... And this is where the have a care, blessed soul, when you cry out in the night quote came from. Ah, okay. 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 So on, Nergs. the feudal world of Malior was within the Segmentum Obscurus, and it was a fortified mining compound. The thing about surf classes of Mal- Malior, Mal- Malior, whatever, um, they have very little in the way of education. They okay. are much like the Gene Stealer cults where they are the downtrodden and the extraordinarily impoverished. Okay. Um, and with their, I gotta be honest, this part is some real social commentary right here. Some <laughs> real social commentary, real all right? Social, okay, okay. Um, the outbreak, they had a outbreak of something called Retchpox. Ooh. And this place, with its very low level of um, education, believed that everything... In techno te- technology and science were the domain for the god emperor alone. Oh, Mortals no. should not seek to master science and technology. So oh. when this wretch pox outbreak arrived, the medical corps from the officio medica came and everyone there refused treatment. Oh, because no. why would you get in the way of the god emperor's blessing? He will heal me through faith and prayer. Oh boy, I've I've unfortunately heard this story before, and oh, there, yeah. this is a uh, this is a a huge yeah. bit of social commentary. Yeah, I was gonna say this is oh, this is, seems like total fiction. This would never happen. Ugh. So they went to this place called Piety's Promise, and uh, the rumors circulating that accepting a cure betrayed a lack of faith in the emperor. So village priests fed the flames, promising healing through flagellation and prayer. Oh, no. And wretch pox continued to spread. Unfortunately, Freytor Kalamund, a priest, recovered from the wretch pox without any medical aid. Could hmm. be could be just not that serious. Could be a miraculous recovery. Who knows? Regardless, he deemed himself chosen by the emperor. Oh, God. And, and told people to lead a pilgrimage to his shrine in the Pramulga Valley, and he would create the rite of cleansing, and all would be healed. Oh, no. So they know. made ways upon ways to the valley, allowing everyone, all the Medicaid's frantic warnings to go unheeded. Oh, and when no. they were... <laughs> 
When they all gathered together in the shanty towns built, they learned word of the Astra Militarum being dispatched to deal with them. And so they had lo very little time. Yeah. So on that day of the rite, he began his sermon with Vox Horn and Servo Skull gathered with the faithful. Se and seven verses in and seven lines into his orient or his orate or, or oh my god. Oration. My goodness, my bad. It's okay. Seven verses and seven lines into it, he began to convulse. Mm. And they believed that he was in fact gripped by the spirits of the god emperor. Not before quite. he then <laughs> erupted in a revolting spray of diseased fluid uh. before the screaming masses and his ruptured remains grew to the great unclean one known as Oblocothorax. Oh boy, here we go. Or Obloxorax. Mm -hmm. At his full height, he began this base level chuckle, raised his hands in benediction, and with seven words long, uh, in the last syllable across the valley, the wretch pox blossomed and devoured its victims from the inside, turning oh. their flesh and their, their innards erupting from every orifice <laughs> and their flesh into a melting, bubbling ooze. Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle fucks you up, man. Like, oh my god. When the uh, Mordian <laughs> Iron Guard went over the valley, they looked down and saw a lake of putrid, liquid, bubbling mass. Oh. And the foot soldiers immediately became sickened from the valley. And as they choked, the great unclean waded his way out of the lake with an army oh. of plague demons at his side. <laughs> Oh no! Like just, just, just the 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 bubbling lake sounds gross, but to think of the great unclean one just wading out of it with this putrid army is just, oh man! Forty K has a way, uh, has has a way with uh, words, I guess. Oh, mm -hmm. oh boy! And you can't fight disease and fever with las bolts and bullets. No, unfortunately, you can't. Especially when you're sick and, and puking and vomiting and it's kind of hard to fire when you're, you know, bent over puking your guts out. Um, if you want to you wanna hit up Shy's comment real quick. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, most recent addition to Nurgle family is our friends the Mobian 6th Guard Regiment from Atoma Prime in the Dark Tide game. They got pushed into horrible war with a demonic Xeno race, and under insane pressure, disease, and psychological trauma, they said, fuck this, we can't take this shit anymore, and turned to Nurgle so they could ease their suffering. That oh, sounds about right. So that those are the green-eyed uh, guardsmen? Yep. Oh, that's their story. Cool. I didn't know that. Here's the uh, image of Nurgle on the Codex. Holy Jesus. Notice how he's <laughs> opening his belly fat with his hand yeah. with the mouth. Yeah, oh my god. It's something, oh, dude. wow. <laughs> it's something, dude. <laughs> that is, that is some artwork. Good lord. <laughs> so <Wow>. last <laughs> last but not least here's the slanesh one which is equally as oh, crazy oh god i <laughs> i gotta be honest <laughs> with you i no longer want that tall glass of slanoosh oh <laughs> come on oh, man boy. <laughs> Ooh -wee. <laughs> yeah, they, they they don't fuck around in this book. It is great. <laughs> wow, that is that's great art though. That is horrific and everything that chaos should be. Wow. The uh the corn and, and zinch ones are also pretty you want me you want me to show you those? Yeah, sure. Alright, I'll show you I'll show you those. Well, well uh, I wanna see because th that's that's really good art. I don't yeah, know who that, did it or who, who, whatever, but damn, that's some diamond shit right there. <laughs> wow. The, Teeth uh, I and am, mouths everywhere. <laughs> I am actually really impressed. I mean, okay, so so Warhammer Codexes have always been really good with their artwork, mm -hmm. but I think this this demon one, they took it to another level. I think this is like a, a new 
new high for some of their artwork. Yeah. Um, the Zinch one is pretty nutty too. Uh, and I actually think the corn wow. ones, despite it being pretty classic, I think the corn one looks really dope. I love that the Zinch one just makes no sense. Like you, you it's can, complete bullshit. You can't even tell. Like there are arms and wings and mouths and teeth everywhere, and it's just like, what is that? Like it makes no sense, and it shouldn't because it's it's Zinch. Yeah, and you can see like a, like a bird head sorta and like a talon sorta, yeah. but like and you got like that rolling massive mouth. It's crazy. Yeah, corn, pretty classic, pretty classic yeah. corn. Yeah, pretty cool looking still though. His head is yeah. pretty dope. The other ones are so great, though. Corn is all right. It's, it's good, but the other ones are so chaotic and just... Ooh, I love it. So, Slanesh. Slanoosh. The Prince of Pleasure, God of Unspeakable Excess, She Who Thirsts, etc. Mm, all about... All about ambition. All about pride. Mm -hmm. The thing the thing is, is that Slanesh and desire. The, th the thing about Slanesh is like... We've talked a lot about this before, but Slanesh is often related with sex, and, and Slanesh is not the god of sex. They are the god of desire, and desire often can be sex. Yeah. It's the excess of many things. Mm -hmm. Sex is definitely one of them, because as the internet as we has learned, most great advances in the internet are for porn. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's why VR became a thing, so you could have more realistic, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, naturally. Oh, yeah. Among, yeah. among sure. us. Sure. Um, but uh, the Sonesh int intrigue is that the power that they gain is so much more insidious. It's much more subtle. Because you can think about, like, okay, you have a murderous blade-wielding gladiator. That's a corn thing. Yep. But their obsessive need to be the best bladesman and the pride they get for their victories. That's Slanesh. That's Slanesh. Yeah. You Slanesh might say is even good then. You might say that a uh, a noble overcoming a political opponent is a Zinchian thing. Mm -hmm. But the opulence and excess in their fancy lifestyle and the plots uh. they are making to deal with their political opponents is a very Slanesh thing. Mm -hmm. So those ideas of entities of excess are, are a big part of it. The cool thing is when Slanesh arrives, how they arrive is really creepy and I think would go for a great psychological horror. Mm -hmm. So it starts off with this kind of like lifting music, oh. right? This like half heard music upon the, like a, on the, upon the breeze as a sound, like a perfume scent across the wind. And the smells and the sounds grow more intense and, and have a bit of like an unease, almost like something acrid is underneath the air. Okay. And the faint smell, it starts off sweet, but then it's like tinged. The tinge of like copper blood or like vomit or stale sweat in the air. Yuck. And it becomes more with its notes of music starts in the music if you listen closely it turns into insidious whispers and voices in the actual mm. chorus mm -hmm. and then there's a, a prickle upon upon your mind where you might just like have your gun just slip out of your fingers or a tank engine might just stop moving because they're they're uh people just don't know what's happening mm -hmm. then daylight becomes harsh and prismatic and painful and voices in your calm beads start to speak and threaten and tempt and and uh, compliment. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a caress on the back of your neck or a feather light touch raking your skin, even with full body armor on. Mm -hmm. And from there, that's when they start to come around. Oh, that's that's just very uh, uneasy and just very it's kind of subtle. Right, it's 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 a little subtle, which is it's, weird because it's yep. the, it's the it's she's or they are the chaos god of excess. So you'd think you'd be just just this excess of like noise and just really uh, fast, just excess of gore and excess of demons, and it's very subtle. It's interesting. It's, it starts this way and yeah. it gets there. Yeah. Because once the demons of Slanesh arrive, the demonettes, the fiends, they their their shrieks of ear-piercing delight as they <laughs> rip apart your friends and 
the grotesque packs of beasts in there and the knives along their bodies and yeah, yeah like the slaughter will eventually reach that level of excess and the okay. horrible corruption takes a little while to get to the excess you don't start at excess you slowly work your way up to it until you're lost in it Sonesh is a, is a subtle type yeah mm -hmm. um and so their story is a little bit le less intriguing to me but um basically it was a imperial colony called Persephone mm -hmm. and Drukhari attacked them oh, and okay. which and they were saved by the ultramarines of course but because of that they had such a debt to the Ultramarines, and they felt such incredible shame at being taken and enslaved by the Dukari uh, that they worked really goddamn hard to properly make themselves strong, powerful warriors like the, um, like the Ultramarines were. Mm -hmm. They created six great clans, six halls of excellence, training arenas to become the best possible humans they could be mm -hmm. and this eventually created the six separate keepers of secrets the high heralds of slanesh to take over each and every single one of these uh halls to martial prowess yep the uh the actual all excess all that excess everything <laughs> got bizarre the the entirety of the uh each palace all six areas were just these weird, like, hab stacks and agricultural zones where these nightmarish transformations. Stone and metal became quivering flesh or a hue, like, crystal milk or a white marble writhed with screaming faces. The wow. fog banks were perfumed with sweat-warm musk with lavender clouds. Those who inhaled it experience the, such ecstasies of pleasure and agony and mindless fury with river with full rivers of wine it, like it, it's wow yeah classic slanesh lot. yeah very classic that's a great image of like a slaneshi uh palace though that was just posted by shy oh that's yeah a the great picture the Ooh. roiling level of, of hedonistic mm -hmm. variants and stuff Really fascinating things I learned here. Also, there, there's one other guy to talk about. We'll have a whole episode on him dedicated, but his name is Bellacor. Mm -hmm. um, Bellacor is the first ever demon prince, but he is he is a chaos demon undivided. Oh, is he the sw is he swole? Is shit? Is mini? Is he like, is he like I mean, a, I think like a black he's... demon that's like uh, yeah, buff yeah, yeah, shit? Okay. yeah. That's the one. Yeah, he's cool. he's buff as hell. Mm -hmm. that's um, the, yeah, that's the man. He's the man. Bellacor is the Dark Prince. Um, he's this fancy kind of guy on his own. I He doesn't serve any of the Chaos Gods specifically. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about him in, a, in its own episode. His mini is baller as shit, though. Wow. Yeah. That is that is very cool. Yeah. That is, is, that is the one that I saw, and yeah, he is dope. That's such a cool sword, too. He is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that, that, that was kind of most of the things I was looking at in this codex. I was reading... Uh, they had this whole talk about what the god represents, what their servants are like, and then a story about them. And, and it was really fascinating to me reading some of this stuff and, and seeing some of these various demons. Um, in game, they have that warp storm ability, but they also just have the thing where if they're close to your enemy, then they lower their leadership because they're terrifying. Yeah, um, uh, naturally. But they have this great ability where normally in the game, you can teleport in nine inches away from your opponent. Mm -hmm. But um, they have this special thing where they can teleport in a the number of inches your opponent's leadership is. So the more oh. terrified they become, the closer you can get to them. And I'm like, that's such a good fucking translation of game of, of like lore to game. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's really neat. Really cool, yeah. Uh, they also have like they have this very fancy demonic save that normally can be adjusted with things like armor penetration, but theirs can't be. Mm -hmm. Theirs is like just this this classic save of of melee and range. So, for example, um, like Zinch demons, Zinch demons are much more um, uh, like in shooting, they barely ever can get shot. But they can get punched really goddamn hard. Okay. 
Um, they also have some fun things like Kairos Fate Weaver is the Zinch Lord of Change, the named one. Mm -hmm. And he has the two heads. And yeah. his rules are one head looks forward, one head looks back. Which is oh, pretty fun. Hey, whenever yeah. he like whenever he like rolls a test for psychic powers, he adds the number, the battle round you're currently on, one through five. Because mm -hmm. one head looks forward. One head looks back. Oh, that's cool. It's, it's really oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. There's a there's like Rodigus, which is the named um Oh, the, uh, the great yeah, unclean yeah. one. Mm -hmm. He has this like he has this ability called streams of brackish filth. Oh. <laughs> Ew. It's it's pretty fun. There's actually there's a lot of really neat shit here. Yeah, chaos is chaos is chaos. That is, chaos demons is chaos. Are, demons are fucked, man. That's whew. I, I really I really liked looking into this. Uh, into this book, and I was like, I wonder what I could find from here to make an episode. I really like some of these stories. Yeah, you found a you found a good chunk of stuff. Some interesting. That Nurgle one is so gross. Oh, dude, I know, oh, right? Oh my god! And you immediately knew when they were like, "Oh no, we're not gonna take any medical service." You immediately, it's like, "Oh boy, this is going nowhere fast." This is what this is what it is. You ever try to pray away your cancer? Yeah, don't do that. Just, don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't do take... that. Medical science has advanced so far. Just please, please, please. All right, that's uh, that's, that's it, it for me. I that's, that's all, all I got. Folks. Uh, it was it was a ton of fun. I really yeah. liked talking about the demons. I enjoyed hearing about the demons and all their. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if I were to make a demon demon army, I think I'd make a Nurgle one. I think yeah. Nurgle is a little weak on the tabletop right now, um, but I just I just find them really fun. Yeah, also, the disgusting. great unclean ones are like impossible to kill. Yeah. Also, they're, Nurglings are funny. Yeah, they're 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 interesting. Yeah, they're so disgusting. The minis are so gross. I know, right? It's <laughs> so that, good. Bleh, mouths and stomachs and pus and just gross coming out of every bleh, bleh. it's so far all right that's all folks thanks a ton for stopping by it was a pleasure and uh we'll see you next week take me home